So this is a parasternal long axis view. Now here, the transducer of the probe uh, is at the left sternal edge between the second and the fourth intercostal space. And the probe marker should always point towards the patient's right shoulder so that it is aligned along the long axis. So this view tells us a lot about the contractility. You can see the contractility of all the chambers in this view. Next, please. Dr. Lavanya, next, please. Yeah, thank you. The second view which we use is the apical four chamber view. So here, the transducer is uh, kept at the fourth to sixth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line to the anterior axillary line. Um, so the uh, probe should, uh, the marker should be directed towards the right shoulder. It gives us an important relev uh, relative dimensions between the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Okay, so this is very important to remember that the normal ventricular diameter ratio of right to left ventricle is less than 0.7. So you can see it is around one third. La right ventricle is around one third size of the left ventricle. So this is very important. Only then you will be able to appreciate any abnormalities if you know the normal values. So a very crude way of uh, learning this will be right uh, ventricle thickness is 0.5. Left ventricle thickness is 1. Right ventricular diameter is between 2.5 to 3. Left atrial diameter is 4.5. And uh, this uh, left ventricular diameter is 5. So thickness, then diameter, and then ventricular, uh, atrial and ventricular diameters. Okay. So thickness is 0.5 to 1, and uh, diameter is around one third. Next, please. So how do you assess the volume status and IV and its preload responsiveness? Okay. Now, theoretical method will. Uh, I'll just uh, brief you about it so that whenever you go back to your hospitals, you can do it, try to do it on your own. So uh, you have to uh, initially rely on a 2D image of IVC entering the right atrium. You have to focus there, okay? Now make sure that it is the IVC, you see it uh, even when your patient is breathing. That means during the movements of respiration. Now, when you have uh, a good view of that, only then place it on the M mode through the IVC. Sp uh, should be taken ideally one centimeter caudal from its junction with the hepatic vein. So your uh, uh, right atrium, IVC and hepatic vein, they all should be present in, you should be able to appreciate them in one view. When you are confident that you have done that, you are able to see it, place it in the M mode. And then record that M mode three, uh, through three to four respiratory cycles. Freeze that image, use the calipers to measure the maximum and the minimum diameters. All right, next. Now, this is where you put the probe in supine position, sub -zephoid area. All right. Slightly right of the midline. Next, please. Yes, perfect. So this is the this is how your IVC right atrium and hepatic vein will look like. All right. If you have made a good view, ideally you should be all able to make this view. It takes time, it takes a little practice, but once done, you will never forget. So. Just one centimeter caudal to this uh, uh, to the IVC where it is uh, in connection with the hepatic vein, you put the um, your uh, machine on the M mode and measure the diameter. Next, uh, can you play this video? And the next one. 
okay so all right so this is the ivc diameter so this is the m mode now you see we have already measured it for a few uh, respiratory cycles now the variability is 1.6 and 1.7 now uh, low cvp the causes of low cvp as we already have studied we all know that it may be because of the uh, hypovolemia so when do we call it as low ivc diameter or low cvp when your ivc diameter is less than 1 cm uh, if your ivc diameter is more than 2 cm that means your patient is more than adequately filled he doesn't require fluid he may require diuretics and if it is less than 1 cm he require more of fluids or more of blood all right so now here the ivc is around 1.6 to 1.7 which is adequately filled okay your patient is nicely filled not over not under next now uh, these are the physiological uh, respiratory variations in the ivc diameter in a healthy volunteer next please now we all know in icus mostly your patients uh, will be on ventilator so they will not have a normal physiology so these are your patients respiratory variations of ivc in patient with controlled ventilation so you can see during expiration it is collapsing and during inspiration it is distending next which is opposite that which have what happens in a non ventilated patient so uh, we have to rely on an ivc collapsibility index so in a normal breathing patient which is spontaneously breathing cyclical variations in the pleural pressure are transmitted to the right atrium right so there is inspiratory reduction of the ivc and during expiration it uh, it is uh, there is no reduction next please this is what happens right during inspiration it collapses because of the transmission of the pleural pressure and during expiration it doesn't next so this cavel index is maximum expiratory diameter minus the inspiratory diameter upon the expiratory diameter through this we can assess whether your patient requires fluid or doesn't require fluid next please so uh, if your cavel index ranges between 0 to 100% Uh, lower side means the patient is already full, doesn't require fluid. Hundred percent means volume depletion. So it's a spectrum. It's not an absolute value. Uh, a rough estimate of uh, CVP with the IVC size. If your CVP is, uh, if your IVC size is less than one point five centimeter, it means your CVP must be around point zero uh, to five. if it is more than 1 uh, 2.5 it means your uh, cvp is around 15 to 60 but they are not absolute values they are just what you have seen over many years and you have to extrapolate them with your patient's clinical condition so a uh, best way to assess is the collapse with the respiratory changes so if your ivc size and collapse that is during respiratory change the uh, collapse uh, of the ivc occurs more than 50% then that means your patient requires fluids if it is non collapsible that is that means less than 50% collapse it means your patient is adequately filled all right next now these are just the reference criteria for volume status uh you can only say that uh, if your lv size is less than 3.5 cm it means your patient is severely hypovolemic uh, rv size is less than 2 cm and ivc size less than 1 cm okay just a crude method of remembering all that because details uh, it will be very difficult for you at this point of time to remember so remember that if your lv size is less than 3.5 cm rv size is less than 2 and your ivc is less than 1 with more than uh, 50% collapsibility of the ivc that means your patient requires fluids next please uh same uh, 
the normal eyeballing uh, values if your rv by lv and diastolic ratio uh, this can be done only by uh, doctors who have already been using eco for a lot of uh, time and they have a lot of experience so only then you will be able to appreciate between this diastolic area ratio so just to complete it that um, when you just see it if it is less than 2.3 um or in uh, normal is less than 2.2 by 3 value then you can uh, measure the tricuspid and um, annulus systolic excursion or rv fractional area change i don't think uh, you'll it will be required but you uh, you can just appreciate uh, in the color doppler that your rv area uh, during end systole if it is one third of the lv it is normal if it is more than that it means there is obstruction if it is uh, l even less than 1 by 3 it means you have most likely um, uh, requirement of more fluid next please uh, skip this please this is just uh, how the pericardial effusion looks like so uh we uh, mostly we are concerned about hypovolemia and rv systolic dysfunction pericardial effusion and tamponade in our icu patients so i'll just concentrate more on these areas so in severe uh, hypovolemia as we already know you will see a uh, left ventricular end diastolic area will be less uh, there will be hyperdynamic lv the contractility will be good uh the small uh, cardiac uh, sizes will be low that means small rv size small and collapsing ivc especially in a patient who is on spontaneous respiration in patients who have acute lv dysfunction because it is primarily cardiac dysfunction so there will be left ventricular global hypokinesia there will be no signs of chronic lv disease plus you can get some regional wall motion abnormalities especially in areas who are being supplied by rca or uh, uh, who have uh, uh, this uh, uh, because of the led uh, in pericardial effusion which is very important uh, thing in icu uh, you can have an n echoic or hypoechoic pericardial free space so surrounding the pericardium you will have an n echoic or a hypoechoic space uh how will you tell that uh, it has progressed to tamponade because we need to, if there is pericardial effusion if it's a large amount especially in patients who are uremic or a patient who has penetrating trauma or even even a patients who have just come out of the surgery any cardiac surgery so they can have they can progress to tamponade so how will you differentiate whether it's a pericardial effusion or it is progressing to towards tamponade so Uh, along with the signs of pericardial effusion if you have signs of compression on the heart then it means it's a tamponade which will be a medical emergency right uh so um, or you uh, deal with suspected severe acute valve dysfunction uh, so you will have abnormal valve motions uh, any aortic or uh, mitral valve uh, along with the uh, anatomical gaps so you will be able to appreciate regurgitation on color doppler um or on the leaflets and the cusps all right uh dilated cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy usually is diagnosed by the cardiologist it's not a medical emergency chronic valvular disease is also not a medical emergency uh, basically systolic dysfunction hypovolemia um tamponade effusion these are the medical emergencies along with that we have one more thing which is very important these days because of the multiple surgeries uh, uh, and uh, like even in obstetrics or oncology patients uh, is pulmonary embolism which can re result in acute rv systolic dysfunction so how do you diagnose that Uh, you may have a patient who is copd and may have chronically right sided pressures raised but uh, there will be something when uh, may also have a ca lung or he may have a dvt 
so high chance of pulmonary embolism so how will you diagnose whether the patient has because of his right side pressures are because of uh, pulmonary embolism or because of the chronic uh, core pulmonary so whenever there is rv dilatation along with rv hypokinesia that means your patient it has deteriorated acutely or there will or if you have a baseline echo where they say the pulmonary pressures were say around 60 but now um, the patient, uh, the uh, pulmonary pressures are coming to 75 so you have that jump along with rv dilatation and hypokinesia hypokinesia is a very important sign so you should that should get you thinking that the patient may have pulmonary embolism okay